Hi Stitchers, this is Beth at West Coast Wool. In today's video, I'm going to share with you all of my favorite tools. And we're going to break this video up into two parts. So let's get started with part one. We're going to talk about prepping, preparing, tracing and transferring your design and kind of how I approach getting started with a new project. The first thing I do when planning my new project is if I'm working out of a book, I like to take my books to the printer and have them put a coil binding on the end. Um, I just like doing this because I want my books to open up really flat. These are a couple examples. This is my Embroiderer's Companion book that I had bound at the printer so it lays nice and flat. And this is a book that I'm going to be doing a project out of. And I love the, the way that when you open the book up, it lays nice and flat. You can easily turn to the pages that you want to trace. And you can also fold it back when you're working with it. So I will take my books and have them bound this way at the printer. So I do recommend that. Um, the printers usually do a really good job. They'll also do a plastic cover on the front if you like. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is freezer paper. I trace 99% of my projects onto freezer paper. It's my preferred method. I'm not a big fan of fusible, but there is, um, there is some times where I use a fusible and I'll just talk to you about that in a minute. So there's two kinds of freezer paper. You can get freezer paper on a roll from the grocery store. It's called Reynolds freezer paper. I use a lot of this and it comes in like a 150 square foot roll, so it's great. But also you can get them in printable freezer paper sheets. Uh, there's different brands out there. This is just an example of one. You can put that through your printer, print off your templates, and just cut them. So if you're not familiar with freezer paper, it has a dull side that you can trace your designs onto, and it has a shiny side in which you use to press onto your wool. And here's a little example of that. I've traced this little pair onto the wool, and I will cut this out. It peels off, and you can use the freezer paper multiple times. So that is my most useful method of transfer. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about is fusible. I don't use a lot of fusible, but sometimes I will get a piece of wool and it has a little bit of a looser weave and I don't want it to, to ravel when I'm stitching it. So what I would do is I would use a um, fusible web, and this is called Soft Fuse. I do recommend it because it's very lightweight. You don't use steam. You trace your design onto the fusible and you press it onto your wool. And then you cut it out, you peel it off, and then you use the opposite side. So you do have to um, be mindful of uh, your directional templates. And so this is just a, an example of what it looks like. And when I do that, I don't necessarily need to fuse it onto my background. You can just use it as a stabilizer. Very helpful stuff, I do recommend it. The next product I want to share with you is a Tear Easy Lightweight Tearaway Stabilizer. This is made by Sulky. It comes in a roll and also comes in these little one yard packets. And this is great if you need to trace something that you can't see with a light box. So a heavier fabric, which would be wool or some other heavier cotton, and you wanna trace some line drawings or for example, uh, wording. You can trace your design onto the tear away. You can stitch through it and then you can tear it away. And it, it's great stuff. I do recommend it if you have that kind of project that you're trying to transfer. So here I have a hot ruler. It is made by Clover. It's called Perfect Press. It's a hot ruler that you can use for turning your seams for cotton overlays. So if you're going to work on a wool applique project and you want to add some cotton applique to your piece, 
you can use this hot ruler. You can um, use it with steam or no steam. It has these markings on it and also has a quarter inch mark here. I, I do like this product, but I, I do have to say I have another method that I use more. And for this, I recommend it. You can take your uh, piece of cotton and you fold over your seam allowance on that quarter inch and then you just use your iron to press it. It does leave a little bit of a lip because of the thickness, but it's pretty thin and it works great and I do recommend it. Um, and it's small. This one is a two and a half by 10 inch long hot ruler, but I wanna show you something else. This is what I use all the time. It is a piece of manila folder that I cut a nice straight edge. I marked lines that are quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. And I like this because when I press it, I get really crisp edges and there's no little like lip on the edge. It presses really nice and you can use a little bit of uh, starch if you need to or best press. Um, I do recommend this because it's inexpensive. If you can't get your hands on a clover hot ruler, this works great. And all I do is I just lay my piece down. I turn over my quarter inch meet the edge of the fabric to the line, and then I press it. That's all there is to it, super easy. Let's talk about wool pressing mats. Here I have two of them. I started out with the small 13 inch one because I wasn't sure if I really liked the pressing mat or if it would do anything special. I ended up buying the 13 inch one. It's a little bit bigger. I do like it a lot. Um, I think it grips your fabric. It keeps it from stretching and shifting. And I think your seams press nice and flat when you use it and it's very portable. So I would recommend a wool pressing mat. The other item I wanna to talk to you about is irons. I have four irons and uh, if you don't already know this, I'm a bit of a gadget girl. I love gadgets and tools. And so I do have four irons, but I'm just gonna show you the two that I use the most when I'm doing my wool applique. And these are just my personal preference. The first one is a Rowenta travel iron. Um, this is actually the newer model to my original and I love it. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. It's, it'll, you know, pack in a suitcase. It is a travel iron, but it gets super hot and I love it. And I do use it a lot for applique. It's got a nice little point and it's easy to use. So I would recommend the Rowenta. The next one I want to show you is this little steam fast iron. And it's a little travel iron. I think you can get steam out of it. It's easy to use, it gets super duper hot. And um, the only, my only, I wouldn't give it like five stars. The only thing I have about this is that it's a little hard to grip. There's no real good gripping when you're holding it. So you kind of have to get used to that, but it is a nice iron and I do recommend it. The next gadget I want to talk to you about is a, a gadget that's new to me. It's called the strip stick. It's a pressing stick and it comes in different sizes. This one is the mini and it's probably about eight and a half inches. It's a little pressing stick. It's got a little uh, piece of wood on the inside. And what's great about this is using this when pressing your seams will keep you from pressing marks into your wool. So just to give you an example here, so I, what I did was I, I sewed two pieces of wool together and I pressed the seams open. And when you're doing that, you are just pressing the seam part, just like this of your fabric. You're not pressing the rest and that means you will keep those pesky iron lines away. 
Uh, you can use it to press cotton seams to one side or open. And everything lays nice and neat and flat. Now one thing to keep in mind when you get your strip stick, you wanna store it in the plastic sleeve that it comes in. So when you order one, it comes in this little plastic sleeve and I recommend that you store it in there to keep it nice and neat. And also it has a little hole in the top of the bag so you can hang it if you like to do that. They come in different sizes and uh, there'll be a link in my description of where you can order them. Okay, Stitchers, let's talk about scissors. Not all these scissors, but just these scissors. I have quite a collection of scissors. I kind of have a thing for scissors and I just, I just collect them and I use them and I kind of put them all in this little stash and store. We'll talk about that later. But I do have many pairs of scissors, but I'm gonna talk to you about my two most favorite and the ones that I use the most. So two scissors here. These are the ones that I use almost exclusively for my projects. These are a Karen K. Buckley serrated scissors. I highly recommend them. They're great on your hands. They're great to cut with. They feel good. They cut good. And for larger pieces, they're an excellent way to cut out your wool. And I would definitely recommend these. The other pair of scissors I want to talk to you about are my four inch small Fiskars. Yes, these are Fiskars. They're inexpensive, affordable, curved four inch scissors. I use them all the time. I've used them for many years. I have probably three pairs since I started doing wool applique, maybe back in 2003. They're good scissors and uh, I, the one thing that I really like about them is the curve. It, it has a slight curve, but the curve is enough to where you can cut circles and around curved edges, and they cut nicely. So I would highly recommend them, especially if you are starting out and you're trying to feel your way through all the different products that you need. Need a good pair of scissors, I would recommend these two. My favorite method for basting my wool applique to my background is pin basting. I pretty much use pin basting for everything and I can recommend two types of pins. They are applique pins. The first I would like to recommend are these little house Japanese applique pins. They are tiny and they're super sharp. I know this because I've poked myself several times, but they're great little pins. They sink into the wool nicely and they have a very sharp point. They're really good for cotton applique also. The other pin I wanna recommend are these little clover applique pins. I've been using these for years. They're sharp. They're a little bit thicker than the little house pins, but they settle quite nicely into your wool and they're great for keeping those pieces together and they don't uh, slip out. So these would be the two I would recommend and you can find these on our website. And I just, I pin baste to the background and then I get ready to stitch. Thank you for watching part one of my favorite tools for wool applique. Please like, subscribe, share, and keep it woolly.